Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Skin School and conversation with um, someone I really admire and someone who has been a model for a long time, worked with the most amazing photographers. But I tell you, the, 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 the coolest thing really is that I got a call yesterday from my um, dear friend, Anna, who's a designer for Galvin. And she said, this is so major. Karen Elson, this is so major. She's my forever muse. Everything I do is based on her and her look. She's so chic and um, modern and beautiful. And so welcome, Karen. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I really um, have to say, Anna was um, speechless that we both have the skin school together. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Barbara. I'm, I, honestly, I'm such a fan of you. And obviously I'm such a fan of um, Galvan as well. So when you even mentioned that, I was so thrilled, but I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, you have like um, a long career. I mean, you look super, super beautiful. Your skin is beautiful. How did you manage to maintain through, you know, everyday makeup? And I mean, sometimes they do crazy things to, to your skin with like crazy colors. I mean, you went through everything, no? Yeah, I really have. And you know, my skin, actually, it's been since the beginning of my modeling career, real work in progress. So people may not know that in the very beginning, when I was a teenager, when I first started modeling, that I had terrible cystic acne. I mean, it was it's so ironic. The moment I started becoming a model was the moment all my hormones in my body just went wild. And I was diagnosed with polycystic ovaries and I would have really bad cystic acne. And um, I think in the very early years, it was a real challenge to take care of my skin because anything would make it break out if it was a, a product that was too, you know, had too much oil in it, or if it was just aggravating, it was such a work in progress. And I had to really, um, for years, I mean, from a very young age, from say 17 years old, I would go and see a dermatologist for my skin because it was essential for me to be, you know, have clear skin for my job, but it was a work in progress. I mean, it was definitely, the right kind of products made a huge difference for sure. I realized that, but for me as well, it was sort of a hormonal thing as well. So I really had to get that in check. And even now I'm 42. I mean, I've just, you know, it's so funny the past year, I started getting just a few hormonal, like, you know, zits again. And I was like, I can't believe <laughs> I'm 42. I think, so dealing with I think this. also, you know, I think the hormonal situation never really stops. And I think the trick is really to find a good doctor who really understands hormones. And that is quite difficult to it figure is. out. And it is. Lots of, yeah. And lots of girls, they, you know, they decide now to get off the contraception pill and then they get the craziest cystic acne. I have so many, my daughter's 20, 25, and she um, had that happen. And all her friends because they don't want to take hormones anymore but they have like all the problem of getting cystic acne from it so the hormones definitely are a big part of um, our skin problems and yeah, yeah finding um, me rest balance. yes Honestly, i mean it was what the moment i um so i mean maybe this is tmi but i started taking uh medication because i guess i have too much of a testosterone androgen exactly according yeah. to my doctor so i take this thing called spiraldactone that I take every day. And it was been a game changer. I mean, from even for my hair, for my, you know, for the my skin, I was feeling, again, it was so ironic that just before we, we are doing this, I could feel yesterday, it's like, oh my God, I'm getting a huge like cystic acne. And I basically was like, okay, I, I, my doctor was like, if that, you start feeling that, just take, just take a little bit extra. And I did, and it went away. Take but I, every day? Do you take spironolactone? I, take it, I, I have to take it every day because otherwise just the, the hormonal stuff that I have. And again, I think it's so important as women that we talk about this, even as we, you know, now I'm 42, you know, that these things, we obviously know that puberty and then into menopause, we have these big hormonal shifts, but throughout my, you know, womanhood, I've had these hormonal shifts and I have been lucky that I have, um, you know, great doctors who take these things seriously but it yeah, as exactly as what you're saying there's almost this um real fear of birth control these days and I understand I mean nobody wants to take a medication every day I mean 
I certainly don't, but I also understand when I don't that it my quality it's is, not, is yeah. exactly, but it's finding a doctor who understands those those concerns. But again, skincare has been obviously from a very young age for me because of the cystic acne, super important. You know, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I took Accutane when I was um, yeah. a teenager, which is so interesting right now because I have a son who started to get cystic acne as well. And we're currently debating if that's the road we want to go down. And I'm sort of having flashbacks of, oh, I'm not sure. How old is he? He's 13, almost 14. You know. So, you know, I think, I think sometimes um, we think that we have to, you know, dry out our skin, you know, with products like, you know, the, let's say the usual products on the market, they are very drying and very aggressive to the skin. Mm -hmm. So they try to really take down the sebum production aggressively, which actually makes the sebum production even get more because they're trying to work against it. So I think right. uh, always good is to first evaluate a good skincare routine with a good cleanser, yeah. a good uh, enzyme cleanser and like a hydrating serum and a good moisturizer, which brings I down sebum production. Exactly. I'm in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, but that would be also good for your son, I think, because um, to, to start using that because uh, you have a good cleanse of your skin, but at the same time you get hydration, at the same time you have ingredients to, to come and soothe the skin and to help um, with the sebum production. So. I think first thing is to really address skincare. And then if you cannot really get rid of the problems, then you have to really go into maybe also check hormone levels, you know, maybe yeah. also go to yeah. a really good um, um, doctor to advise you on hormones, but then definitely try to get rid ASAP, you know, with the help of a dermatologist, because if we, if we keep, you know, dealing with it, we can end up having scars, we end up having all kinds of pigmentation issues. And that really is then problematic for your mental health and you become self-conscious. So exactly. maybe try for six weeks to manage yourself. And if not, then probably go and have like some, you know, medication for it. Yeah, we're definitely on that. We're definitely on that path right now of trying everything. It's so funny what you say though, because I, as a model, it's obviously I, I've tried. I'm like the, you know, a lot of people love to try their products on me. And it's very interesting, especially during fashion week, um, is that that's also when my skin, I mean, everything can happen to my skin during fashion week. I sometimes get contact um, dermatitis on my eyes from all the brushes, um, yeah. you know, start getting eczema, start getting the random zits and whatnot. But what I love about you is the past, I mean, pre-pandemic is that when I would go to Paris is that I would know that you would have your hotel suite in, you know, ready and that all the models, we'd all come and get our facial during fashion week. But I can't tell you how much that makes a difference. Again, that was, was great. Looking yeah. Looking at your products and specifically for me, I think during fashion week is the hydrolonic serum because I'm just, when you're taking off, you know, tons of makeup, not just once or twice a day, sometimes up to eight times a day, your skin starts getting just stripped of everything. And I would find in the evening when I would use your hydrolonic serum and then just really pack on the moisture, I'd wake up in the morning and the inflammation was down. And I think that's something about, even as I talk about, you know, my acne struggles in, in the past, a lot of it was due to just, you know, inflammation when your skin doesn't have a chance to sort of calm down, even with the stuff that you eat, even the, you know, your stress levels, all these things have an impact on your skin's health. So for me, it's been a, it's been a process. And obviously now I'm in my forties. Look, I, I am not going to lie. Like I love a little bit of Botox. <laughs> <laughs> I love getting my, you know, I recently became obsessed with the, you know, like, what's it called? Oh my God. Aqua gold facials. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but I would check it out. It's fun, you know, but I, I'm not going to, you know, there's definitely little things here and there that I, that I do, but I view all these things as preventative. Like I do, never want to do too much. You know, I feel like, again, all the women that I know and look up to yourself being included, because I just think you have the, you're like the, the best ambassador for your brand because your skin is so glowing and you look so beautiful and natural, you know? And I, that's ultimately 
for me as a woman, I don't want to look different. You know, I don't yes. want to look like I, I've got like the frozen face pumped with filler and whatnot, but I also am vain enough and it is my job to be a model that I, I yeah, like. That's your career. Right, it's like I do maintenance, but I recognize that it's, it really is up to the discretion as well of, of, you know, sometimes, you know, the doctor and their sort of worldview. And I found that's become very much, very important to me as I, as I get older is making sure that I see, you know, say a dermatologist that understands that I'm not here to look like, you know, a, a sort of Frankenstein version of myself <laughs> up to the max that I want to look like me, but I want to maintain it for as long as I can. <laughs> but you need to really stay on top of this because I think there are lots of dermatologists who just do everything the same for everybody and everybody looks the same. They yeah. all be a little lips and little that. I think you need to really be in charge of it. And one good thing is if you look at the doctor, you can see their faces and you see, oh, do I like it? Do I like their Botox or whatever? You see quite a tendency in, you know, in the aesthetic view of this doctor because that's what it is. You know, we need to really have the same idea of, of what's beautiful. And, you know, with Botox and fillers, I agree, you know, first of all, it's your career. Um, and it's an easy way to maintain freshness in your skin and your face and, you know, also keep your, you know, your, you know, your, your appearance lifted and, 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 mm -hmm. you know, happy, you know, if you look in the mirror and everything is saggy and, you know, yeah, but you kind of look angry and you, you are not even angry, but you look angry. It's kind of a problem for our mental health. I, I feel like if we can you know, enhance a little bit with Botox and fillers, um, we feel happier and we feel um, totally like, you know, good in our skin. Same with our skincare. It's about, you know, maintaining our self-confidence in how we look. And I think we are all looking, you know, in the mirror in the morning and, you know, if we like ourselves, fine, we're ready for the day and we don't worry about it. But if we have like little things here and there, we suffer and we just like feel very self-conscious. So I really like the idea of, you know, you know, at a certain age, I, I'm not a big believer in doing too much as prevention, just because I started doing Botox when I was 30 years old. And I have to say, I didn't have to do it. I was just doing it because it was my job and I was trying everything out, but you know, it atrophies your muscles. And now I really have problem. If I wouldn't have Botox, my eyebrows would you know, everything would come so low. So I really have to keep doing it. Which is funny because people don't realize that either. I think a lot of young women today, it's almost what I've realized it's become, you know, even women in their twenties and early thirties are using Botox without recognizing exactly that it can, that there will be some muscle atrophy and yeah. it does affect you know, the skin's yeah. elasticity and whatnot, which is why exactly. I feel like the yeah. tenement, you could do anything. You could get, you know, fillers, you could do lasers, yada, yada, yada. But if you don't have good skincare, like the foundation of all of it, when, you know, I look at women who, you know, I admire and, you know, I even see this in, in myself when my skincare is, is, when I'm doing, you know, keeping up with maintenance of using the right kind of products and whatnot, the Botox is just a little extra sparkle, but the tenement is if you've got good skincare, that is the foundation that you're laying. And I think, again, a lot of women and men today just almost feel like the Botox and filler is just going to make everything okay. But unless you have the foundation, like I said, of a great skincare routine, you can do all kinds of things. The stuff's going to fade. <laughs> Yeah, I think the most important part is also the hydration level of your skin, you know, hydration and deeper and more superficial um, skin layers. And, you know, when you said, you know, you use the hyaluronic serum, that is one of the best hydrators there is, which takes care of all skin layers, helps to um, the skin cells to be hydrated because then they are juicy like grapes instead of raisins and can take on active ingredients through their osmosis channels. And I think that keeps our skin juicy and plump, keeps our um, collagen and elastin plump keeps our hyaluronic um, right. acid reservoirs there and you know and prevents from getting these fine ends and wrinkles so if you are in your 30s and you that's when you start seeing those growth feeds and then you're like oh let's just get some Botox I tell you you can do so much already with just 
giving hydration to the skin, using some really good sturm serums and moisturizers. And that's, that's it, you know? You know, for example, the, so many of your amazing serums. Yes, right the super anti-aging serum and the night serum. The night wow. serum is amazing. Um, helps with fine lines and wrinkles. That's just like, if you keep doing a super, super advanced skincare routine, you will be able to prevent from getting those um, fine lines for a long time, for a long time. So it makes a really big difference to start using good skincare uh, when you're young. I have a question for you, just a random one that popped into my head. It's just, what is your opinion? Because I love that I've got you here now. <laughs> what is your opinion on retinols? Oh, on I'm so, you know, I started, um, you know, on the orthopedics and I, um, you know, created an anti-inflammatory treatment with your body on proteins, like taking from the blood. And these anti-inflammatory proteins helped basically to bring down inflammation in the joints and help to prevent from aging. So inflammation and aging goes pretty close together. Mm -hmm. And one thing retinol and retin-A is doing is causing inflammation. Oh, so you see you get redness, it burns, it's all inflammation. And inflammation is causing aging. Besides it takes off your microbiome, your skin barrier, your, your healthy skin layers. It makes your skin super vulnerable, makes your skin sensitive, dry. So that is really something I would never recommend to use. I never would use this on my skin or in any of my family's skin. So I think it's um, really important to stay away from those marketing anti-aging um, tools, you know? I really appreciate you saying that because I, you know, it's, it, it, I rarely use, you know, retinols, but back when I used to have, my skin was getting problematic again, just a couple of years ago, I started using it. And I, I again, exactly what you were saying, <laughs> nothing worse than, you, you know, having a zit and then going to a shoot with your, like you still have the, the zit, but because you think you're healing off as well. <laughs> but you think, you know, with retinol, you do a quick fix. You're like, right. oh, this quick fix, that doesn't work. You know, I think it's like, you know, when we have a child who, who, who hurts themselves, you know, falls and has a bleeding knee you don't put this child in time out right. you hug it you love it right. it's the same with the skin you know if the skin is already hurt let's love it and let's soothe do anti-inflammation hydration and keeping skin barrier function strong you know and like really maintaining good skin health instead of bombarding and attacking our skin yeah I love, I love all your, your philosophy. I think it's, again, especially now is I'm in my forties, I realize more and more <laughs> how much that is becoming the mantra for me. I mean, I have put my skin through so much over the years just from doing what I do. Of course, of course. I, that's why, that's why it's so interesting. You know, the way you, you, you were able to maintain, you know, your career you know, and having the struggles with the skin and having to take spironolactone the entire time. It's tough, you know? I mean, like, we do a lot for our careers. Yeah. Um, and also but, for you know, our well -being as well, because I don't want to have, yes. you know, acne. But I will say for me, sunscreen has been, you know, I, again, just, you know, as we're talking, I think that's been a big thing for me, especially now. Like, I, I think I recently started realizing very slightly, you know, I was like, oh, there's a few little, like, just things that are appearing on my skin. So I, I mean, I wear sunscreen almost every day, but recognizing how much more, especially now, how important it is for my skin's health. I mean, I've got your sun drops, which is factor 50, but I also find my skin getting reactive, not to your stuff, but when sunscreen has got too much chemicals in, it can yeah. actually burn my skin. I tell I'm you. so glad for your, for your stuff because it never does that. Yes, sunscreen, you know, sunscreen is not a great ingredient. The filters are not really amazing for the skin. So right. what I did with the sun drops, I paired it with pentanol. I put like hyaluronic acid. I put like super nice ingredients in to soothe the skin the same time. Like we add the filter in our skin. And it's important before we use sunscreen, use a good skincare routine. And mm -hmm. that is something, you know, when we decide, you know, sometimes we like to curate our own skincare routine, the cleanser from that brand, the moisturizer from this brand and like all this kind of stuff. And I really, I really wanna, it's better to use less, but use one brand and use like, get like all the benefits of this one brand instead of, you know, 
things can interact with other ingredients from other skincare products, which you cannot really over see. So if we um, think we need to use a sunscreen, by the way, we need to also use um, HEV, HEV protection screen, you know, and I created the anti-pollution drops. I don't know if you oh, have what? the anti-pollution yes, drops. Yes, I do. I do. And I, I actually, I'm so glad that you brought this up because I really would love to know a little bit more, like how to use the sunscreen and the anti-pollution drops together. I'd love to know that. Yes. And by the way, um, you know, our kids are on Zoom class, you know, they should, they should really also use when they are in front of the computers, you know, video oh, games really? or whatever they do, they need to use the anti-pollution drops. But sometimes the screens can also cause breakouts in your skin. Oh. So sometimes the anti-pollution drops are a step to um, good skin because we underestimate the power of pollution, the power of um, the HEV light. And the HEV light actually is the same aggressive like sunlight. It penetrates deep and aggressive into the skin. We don't get sunburn. But we, you know, we get like the results of premature aging, you know, and sagginess of the skin and um, inflammation, in our skin, hyperpigmentation. So we need to have a screen protection. So the ideal um, do is the sun drops and the anti-pollution drops together. Amazing. I'm so glad you told me that because that definitely will help. Because I, I, I never thought about that. And I think especially these days, we're more in front of a screen than, than ever. Oh the, yeah, right. We are and, more on the screen than on the, in the sun, you know. Right. Oh, very much so for me. That that is yeah. the truth. But also the effects of, you know, I've been just recently just paying a little bit more attention to my habits, with, you know, constantly on my phone, constantly in front of a screen, and it is yes. you know knowing that the blue light can affect our you know moods, how we sleep, and whatnot. Of course, that would affect also our eye, health, health. Our, our eyes, our health. Right. You know, we should we should wear these glasses, these blue light glasses. You know. Well, now I, I have I to wear now I have to wear so glasses bad. all the time because I am you know I, I can't see anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but it gets worse from the screens. You know, yeah. I, it got so much worse for me right. so fast from just being on screens. I I think that is we need to really um, take it seriously. The HEV light is right. not and that I, I great. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I never even considered that until you just mentioned it. You because know, you I, don't get burns. You don't, right. because you right. don't really see it. But some people, they get redness, you know? So mm -hmm. they see when they sit in front of the computer, they see their skin gets super dry mm -hmm. and red. And, you know, another really great product is the hydrating face mist. When you mm -hmm. put on the hydrating face mist, that is really great to just keep hydration going, but also the anti-pollution drops you can reapply onto your skin in between. So um, when I spend lots of time in front of the computer, I reapply it even. Well, right after we do this, I'm gonna be <laughs> <laughs> loading it on. Um, that's so funny. I am just, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm asking you so many questions. I'm just, I, no, I just good. talking. It's just um, what you're, views on like red light speaking of lights red light or blue light because you know I recently during the pandemic because I wasn't able to go and get my sort of like facial with red light you know like what what are your thoughts on that stuff I, I recently discovered I, I the travel light with a red light What's I that? travel with a red light I, I travel mm -hmm. with a mini red light and we have red light um, therapy in our spas as well okay. so red light therapy is definitely some some something you know, I recommend to recharge your cells to help with your mental health, with your joints, with, mm -hmm. you know, with your powers of the cells and just like to bring down inflammation. I think that's really good to do. Sometimes, you know, I just sit in front of it because it also calms me down. Mm -hmm. it does it's really nice. Too. I um, yeah. So there's this bed, it's called the light stim bed. And it blew my mind when I when I got at it. My my I, I mean I am quite a sort of high energy sort of you know for me to take a nap in the middle of the day is it's unheard of. And I went to um, just try this light stim bed in New York a while ago, and because obviously you do the front, it's almost like you're on a tanning bed, but it's red light, you know. And I fell fast asleep I felt like I'd had like an hour and a half massage and it really struck me that I was like okay what is the red light doing specifically to my immune system to my cells that is really allowing my body to regenerate it's wild I want to get one of those beds so nice. ridiculously expensive so 
Um, I think there are different ones. I think um, there are also ones you just, it's not a, it's not an um, expensive technique, you know, mm. it's easy to do. I, I think you can find like um, super, super cheap lights on Amazon. I think okay. there's, it is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my parents used red light on us when we were young and we had like really? sinusitis, you know, we didn't do antibiotics. We just had red light therapy, um, actually warm red light and we're just loosen up our sinuses. Was, ah. I mean, I grew up with that. It's, it's, so, it's, good. Good. it's so good to know this stuff because I feel like, again, you clearly know this being, you know, a doctor, right? And, but it's, it's, it's funny for um, me because it's these things, mm -hmm. these discoveries are just sort of, coming about at least for me I mean I know red light has been used for many many decades but I I do believe that it, it, exactly that like I every time I've gone on a red light bed or sometimes now I have like one of those face red light things that I that I use from time to time but it really makes a big difference no it's so good what what is your diet like do you eat super healthy you probably as a model you, you you've been eating healthy forever no you know and that's interesting because i think for many years ago i would almost go to the opposite extreme where i was probably not eating enough and was existing on like coffee and and green salad which is definitely not uh you know sustainable you know but these days i always believe that balance you know i think just for my own mental health i think anything that feels too rigid it's just for, for me personally, doesn't work because I start going into that restrictive mindset. So these days yeah. I, I try and eat clean, but I give myself grace. You know, there's a great restaurant in Nashville that I love that makes the most delicious pizzas. So I'm going to eat the pizza from time to time. I'll have the odd glass of wine. I think, you know, it's the balance of all things. But again, it's not until I became older that I understood that, you know, like I, maybe in my 20s I didn't necessarily love drinking the green juice where in my 40s I wake up every morning I make myself an amazing smoothie with vegan protein powder and you know blueberries I put a date in there basil and it's delicious but if I would have done that in my 20s I, I it's so it's so interesting where you get to and a green juice I, I love drinking green juices these days so it's funny because it's the nice thing about aging well, the wellness for me, it's when it feels, I think the balance for me as a model is that the moment it feels like I'm maybe restricting food because I feel like I have to fit in a dress is the moment my brain goes a little loopy. So I always have to keep myself in check that when I'm eating healthy, I'm just doing it for me because it makes me feel good, you know, but yeah. again, give myself a little grace that sometimes I don't know, sometimes that really delicious green salad needs some fries. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you so you do you do both. But you know, I can in general imagine, I would like, say I'm I'm you know, I I think I have a very, you know, balanced diet and I take good care, I take good care of myself. I love, I mean, I again in my 20s, it was so different because I really hated working out when I was 20s, in my 20s, because I felt like it was a punishment for not fitting in a dress. Whereas now in my forties, I don't know, I was working out the other day and I was running really fast and I was on a rowing machine and <laughs> lifting some weights and I, I felt amazing, you know? So again, it's, it's, I think physical wellness has to go with mental wellness as well. I think yes. they have to go together. If you're just only focusing on your physical wellness and you're not focusing on your mental wellness at the same time, there's a disconnect. For me to integrate the both, that my, you know, emotional and mental wellness are a part of my physical wellness, that I'm constantly just being mindful, checking, checking in that the, the way I'm working out, that it works for my body. I'm not pushing myself too much into deprivation, but I'm feeling, you know, nourished and healthy. That's the key for me. And like I said, but that's the nice thing about aging, no? isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because you get yeah. to that wisdom at a certain point. Yes. Yes, you don't have this when you're young and then you exist on coffee and salad and, you know, yeah, that's not healthy. You know, who wants to be, you know, I'm in my, like, yeah, I'm but, but you know what? I don't want to be in my 50s and just, you know, no, but, hungry but, you know, and grouchy. So many, <laughs> suffer. So many some young, young women suffer from, you know, calorie restriction and trying to be skinny, skinny, skinny and overlook that we really need to nourish our body, our brain, you know, if we get give our body just so little calories 
it really takes only care of the major things, you know, the basic things, you know, and it takes away from our hormones, it takes away from our brain, it takes away from so many other things we need to nourish. Um, and I think that is something, you know, totally being overlooked when we, you know, follow the, you know, whatever idol we are following who are like super right. skinny and I need to look like this and I need to have that. I think um, it's always um, good to, you know, t tell a little bit about your experience with that and how you got out of it. But also apparently just by age with, you know, all the age you got to, you know, may maybe become a little more balanced and, you know, mindful of it. And I think again, being a, a model, you know, I started modeling when I was young, I was 15 years old. So when you're being, you know, obviously I, I think some people may know, I talk a lot about this these days is that when you start out as a teenager and you're in a sort of grown up world and people are dressing you like you're a woman, you know, you're in high fashion magazines wearing yeah. what women are wearing, but you're still an adolescent. I think sometimes sort of the industry itself gets used to you as that body type when yeah. you're 16 years old, when you haven't fully developed, you know? I mean, I know again from having teenagers seeing they have these growth spurts, then they level yeah. off and they have another growth spurt. And I think it kept, for me, it became a dangerous thing in some ways because when I turned 19, I had my kind of final growth spurt or 18, 19, where, you know, I was it's so funny because before I became a model, all I ever wanted was to have like, a booty and some, you know, some breasts. So like, I, I, cause I was just so flat chested and had no hips and nothing. And then sort of at the, the very tail end of my 18th year, all of a sudden hormones kick in, like I said, also the skin stuff started happening as well. And the, my body changed into what it is. And it was difficult for the industry to wrap its head around my changing body because they really wanted me to stay in the box of adolescent this crazy and, is this yeah. crazy yeah I and mean, I, it was a turbulent thing for many years for me because I felt like I had to constantly deny myself food or go on you know really aggressive cleanses detoxes just to kind of fit the sample size and I think again even this pandemic has given me a lot of pause for thought being a mother that I, 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 I think again having kids and then just taking a little time really helped me recognize that again the priorities healthy priorities but it's it's you know I do think that as fashion evolves it is a really important conversation of just the gaze of what we put these women in magazines the pedestal that we're putting them on and the reflection that it shows to just women in the world in general yeah. and I think if if people reading magazines or looking online, looking on Instagram knew that a lot of these women are also sort of unfortunately depriving themselves. Maybe it would just give us a, a moment to pause and have a conversation about the expectations we put on people to look a certain way. I mean, a prime example of this, I was looking on Instagram this morning and that um, amazing um, musician, her name's Casey Musgrave. She put something on her story um, that was about the media's take on women and how the media has called certain women fat over the years and what yeah. their bodies really were. And they brought um, Kate Winslet up as a as an example. And I look at Kate Winslet and see just a absolute, I mean, I, it's crazy how maybe in the 90s, early 2000s, because she was not a stick insect or sort of depriving herself, that her body, which I look at and view as just, a beautiful, I, I, beautiful, even yeah. The label fat, even the label curve, even the label plus size for me, I, I'm just not into anymore because we're just people and we all have different body types naturally. But it was an interesting thing to see how the public's perception really does shape sort of women's self worth. And I think in fashion, you know, I, I do believe that the days of say being a size zero, look, if that's what your natural body type is that's your natural body type. But I think expecting women to, to fit that mold, I think mm -hmm. those days are coming to a close because they have mm -hmm. to, because it's just not empowering to expect a woman to deprive herself to look good. You know, we can yeah. feel like at a 
size four to six these days, I feel better than ever, you know? Yeah. So it's sort of let, I think I come to work and probably deliver more, give more because I'm in my skin, in my skin in a more holistic, happier way. But like I said earlier, that's the point of wellness, isn't it as well? It's like, you can look beautiful, but if you're not nourishing yourself, things will start to fall apart eventually. It is fall the apart, integration. You don't radiate happiness. I think it takes a toll on you and um, your mental health will, will suffer and you will have so many problems later on, you know, if you don't feed your body correctly. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you learned from your mom? Was your mom like, you know, girl, eat a little more or did she just like be on you about this stuff or did she just let you you know do what I think you because I left home when I was 16 and I think that was obviously she was incredibly nervous when yeah you know, I mean I have a 15 year old daughter and just the idea of her leaving home at 16 is horrifying to me and I will say that my mother you know she's always a very independent woman and I think that that definitely has come out in me and I'm a twin as well actually I have a twin sister and my twin sister we're, we're not identical we're fraternal twins but she sort of has dark brown hair and this, we're kind of you know I'm the paler version of her essentially but I think my mother's sort of independent and stubborn streak definitely showed up in me <laughs> because again it's even that sense of justice that I have within the fashion industry where I've always felt like when I see things that I know could potentially be harmful, I know I always have to find a way to express these yeah, things. Yeah, you're outspoken. I am outspoken. And sometimes yeah, that's, that's complicated really cool. at times, you know, because it, it's it's something I, I can't help. You know, I think yeah. when I see things that don't seem to add up I have to have an opinion about it or at least want things to improve and I think that's for me again yes. my mother being such an independent woman that just is very much in me is that that independent streak where I have never in my life followed the path of everybody else I've always found my own my own unique way even in work there's sometimes where things I you know I might say no to a job because it doesn't feel like it fits me or I might choose a different path that maybe so you said no to things yeah I say I say no to stuff often if it just doesn't yeah. feel right and I think these days for me a big part of that is that I have to feel safe when I walk on set I have to yeah. feel respected it's it, I think often for models, we're expected to just kind of drop everything in our lives just to make it to that shoot. Because if we don't say yes, maybe the opportunity won't happen. Yeah. And I think sometimes for me these days, again, especially because I'm a mom, I, you know, like yourself, we have things that we're juggling on top of our professional lives. And I've learned that the power of saying no when it's right to say no, when it when it's, you know, not just because, but when it feels like you have to set a boundary. You know, I think for me, sometimes with my kids, it's been difficult with fashion because stuff comes up last minute. And, you know, back in the day, it may be the, the school play that my daughter's in that I really mm -hmm. don't want to miss, but there's that Vogue shoot, you know, and just trusting that it's okay. You know, my, my daughter's performance is really, really, really more important to me. And it's okay to say no. And it doesn't mean that I'm insulting, intentionally insulting anybody. It's just, you know, sometimes you have to say no. And I think I've learned that again, the older I get. Also comes with age. I think that also saying no to things. I think when we're young, we just want to jump on every opportunity yeah. and, you know, we become more confident and, you know, more relaxed about you know letting things go as well so I had to learn that too that's not the easiest it's not the easiest especially in the businesses that we're all in because I think again the rapid nature of of you know I'm sure what you do and you're in you know fashion and entertainment circles as well and I think there's always this thing that everybody's like hustling and we got to say yes we got to create these <laughs> opportunities and that's okay but you can do that with you can have boundaries with even that. Also, you know, things in fashion 
they they come and go they're, they're so <laughs> fast i mean like we're living in the world which is so fast you know emails and social media and you know we're not even waiting for you know a magazine delivery it's just online and da, 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 da. so back in the day just, there was a collection oh. and you'd wait and for a few months you'd shoot all yeah. the magazines and yeah. then in three months times the, the, that collection would be in the magazines and then another three months out in the stores and there is a rapid nature of the world today which again it's evolution i always feel like it's so easy for people in my position to be like it was better back then like i feel like there's a bit of both i think evolution is really yeah. important but i also feel like um you know just taking time to pause sometimes is it is is really important as well and again i've learned that with age oh all the things i could say to my 20 year old self i mean but i probably wouldn't have listened what would you say to your 20 year old self huh <sighs> i think that that's exactly what i was just saying you know the idea yeah. that getting caught up in a panic feeling this obligation to always please people yeah. to make everybody else happy to have to sort of sacrifice my own sometimes physical and mental well-being in order to fit in you know that that i think i would say to myself that you know it's okay like these things do happen don't torture yourself because of it but you know my the, the great of the advice i would give to my 20 year old self really is be patient be gentle yeah. on yourself because that's where i've got to now as a woman in my 40s is that level of that's patience. a nice advice Keep yeah patient and again i yourself. think it's a, yeah. when you're young you feel like everything is definitive you know if i don't mm -hmm. make this connection the opportunity will never come again and i'm a big believer in fate and how things appear when they do and you also have to work hard for it as well i mean i think it's an interesting thing with this generation as well i mean i think you know i've worked hard you have worked hard that's just part of it. You know, things don't just appear on your lap. You do have to work hard, but it is okay to work hard and have boundaries at times for mm -hmm. certain things. I mean, again, it's taken me 42 years to figure that out. It's still a work <laughs> in progress, but what are you going to do? <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, I'm learning so much from you. I think we're all learning so much. Um, should we dial some people in and have a conversation sure. with them i'd love that so jennifer jennifer how are you are you there yes i'm here how are you hi jennifer hi hi thank you for having me today this has been a great conversation um just a little bit bit of background about me um i am a mom i have two little boys in elementary school i live in new jersey um, I'm in my forties and my question for you and why I'm glad we're having this conversation. There's so much out there for women today and for men, quite frankly, to use on their skin. There's so much out there. It's so overwhelming. All the different products, the serums, the moisturizers, the things that are specific to your needs that sometimes when I walk into a store and I'm looking for a great product, it is so overwhelming. So I wanted to just hear from you speaking to a woman in her forties, you know, uh, someone who never used Botox before don't, I'm not there yet. I'm nervous to do that. I don't want to start it because then it's kind of like dyeing your hair. You have to keep doing it over and over. And I'm nervous to keep doing that, um, into oils, moisturizers, serums, wanted to hear from you on what's, what's good. What, like, is it just less is more use more when you need it. It's not one size fits all. So I wanted to hear from both of you on what you think. Um, I do have your enzyme cleanser, Dr. Serum, and I love it. Um, I haven't tried anything else just yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. So good. Good. I mean, guys. it's, yeah, it's such a, it's such a great question because that's, that's exactly the reason why I started skin school, because there's so much out there, so much confusion is so overwhelming, you know, exposure of products and, ingredients and marketing and i feel that you know we shouldn't fall into the traps of marketing i think marketing should be really be gone because that is just like and 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 and, and that's not um to diminish you know photo shoots and stuff but yet often you know campaigns are being sh shoot shot because you know a skincare brand wants to have like a few models on a billboard and promote a product so that is i think passe that is yesterday i think what really matters is you know are the products effective are they safe to being used are they are there 
what ingredients are in there, what is the purpose, what is the philosophy behind the product. So we have as consumer, we have to do our homework. It's not just, oh, we go in the store and someone will tell us what to do because these people are also working yeah. for certain brands or you know, they, they have their agendas as well. So you have to really be um, knowledgeable before you even enter the store. And I think what we, what, what I, what my philosophy is really take care of your skin barrier, you know, especially when we age, it's important to get our skin barrier strong, get the hydration in our skin um, to the optimum, use a moisturizer, which suits your skin, not too rich if you have oily skin, not too light if you have dry skin, just should be right you know, with the ingredients, you know, and what age level you are. So finding those, um, you know, tools, which can be super simple. It doesn't need to be, you know, 10 steps routine could be a serum and a moisturizer, you know, and a cleanser and an enzyme cleanser could be like as simple as this. And you would be super happy. It really also depends what you're willing to do, what you're willing to, um, to, 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 you know, give on time to your skin. And I always recommend, have a good cleanser. With the cleanser, it's important to respect your pH because the skin's pH is slightly acidic. So it shouldn't be soap. It shouldn't be anything which is too alkaline. And so I always recommend our normal foam wash, super hydrating, gentle, has aloe vera aurea, feels like a silk on your skin, takes care of, you know, super nicely cleansing your skin. You don't have to double, triple wash. It's all nonsense. So use the cleanser for every day. The enzyme cleanser you only use twice a week for um, exfoliating gently your dead skin cells. And then you use a serum and a moisturizer. And this could be the super anti-aging serum because we are in our 40s. So we want to have like some power. The super anti-aging serum. I would also add the night serum for night. And I would do the super anti-aging face cream. And if you are willing to use one more, I also would use our Good C serum, which is really anti-aging as well. And this is all for designed to strengthen your skin barrier function, designed to take inflammation out of the skin, designed to keep your skin from aging, useful, hydrated, keep your skin cells juicy and performing, you know, and keeping your skin in good structure and tight so you don't run into wrinkles and fine lines and sagginess. So that would be a really, really good routine um, for us in our 40s, you know, and I yeah, recommending my products because I, I know them the best, but I'm also an ingredient nerd. I, I love science. I also, you know, I, I even did like these little um, discovery kits where you have all the products in a small little kit together. You can start with that. So you have everything together so you can use it all and try it out and have it like for four weeks. And you see an effect if you only use Derm in days. I mean, like the first time you, you, you will love it. It's just... Um, really everything um, your skin needs without attacking your skin. Um, what, do, what, do you, what, what do you think, Karen? What, what, what um, advice well, would you give? Well, I agree with this? everything that you're saying. I think, again, like with skincare for me, at least, it really is sort of a tailored experience as to what I feel my skincare needs are. So for instance, as I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and the humidity here is insane, especially in the in the summertime and when I'm using more sunscreens, my skin's more sort of oily and whatnot. So I have to tailor what I use. And I am personally like a less is more, but good quality products. Cause I feel like when you get into the, at least for me, when you're overloading your skin with almost too much, you can start depriving your skin. So exactly what Barbara is saying, you know, like with, I mean, I love her cleanser and I love, I really do love the, I mean, I have it in front of me, the enzyme cleanser for real. I mean, cause it just exactly what she's saying, you know, the having a good cleanser. I think people really overlook cleansers and often use cleansers that are so harsh and stripping. So then you're mm -hmm. stripping everything away and then you're having to put back in what you've just stripped away. And I think having a, a, a great cleanser and also having one like an enzyme cleanser a couple times a week that just lifts gently all the you know the dead cells and then just putting nourishing nourishing things on there even if like myself yeah. I think can be a bit reactive sometimes and I can get acne I found out if I use anything drying it makes it worse so I mean the hydrolonic drops are a godsend for me yes vitamin c I think that is always just a you know 
a nice thing to use every so often but unless she was saying the i've just started using actually your um it's the super anti-aging um serum actually before i came here i was like all right let's <laughs> sounds good no yeah it really is and I, again i think um i mean i'm listening to you as well barbara because i can sometimes go like you know product hopping from uh, a try yes. a bunch of things because again i i really love skincare so i love to try stuff but i can get myself into um trouble may be the wrong word but i i can sometimes negate certain you know yeah, like it's, it's called self-inflicted self-inflicted damages exactly. so you can do a lot of harm with skincare ingredient and i just want to say you know ingredients which cause inflammation should be avoided in skincare this could be fragrances this could be retinol retinic glycolic hydroquinone um acid peels just let's stay away from everything aggressive it doesn't do us any good yeah i agree and then you know i mean there's i mean i have you know my little tried and true pro true products like i said the enzyme cleanser i'm obsessed with hydrolonic acid you know i'm also just curious barbara about like face oils as well because i use um mm -hmm. fitness daughter face oil from mm -hmm. time to time when i feel like my skin like if i'm getting on a plane it's sort of like okay I will sometimes I'll cheat on you and I'll have like a little hydrolonic <laughs> serum and then I'll use a little bit of this face oil. And I'm, I mean, it could be any face oil is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. For me, it's more what I realized recently is, oh, could I be negating by using too many products? Like, could the face oil be dissolving the, the active in another face cream? And I'm just curious about that because again, being, not being a doctor you know i don't know what the counteractions of these things can be because i do love using a face oil just yeah. during the day sometimes just to give my so skin it, a little if glow if it works for you i personally i'm not a big fan of face oil. It's first of all i don't know i i don't like how it feels on the skin but i also don't like foundation all this oil is, doesn't um, work for my skin but i also think if you use face oil face oil on dry skin there's a disconnect between the dry flaky cells and the oil. So it's like a film which goes oh. off anyway. So it doesn't give you anything. So oil only works on hydrated skin and hydration comes from a hyaluronic serum, you know, for example, or a good moisturizer. So face oil only works on, on, on hydrated skin, but also face oil can shut down your own serum production. So if you overwhelm your skin, often also face oils clog your pores, you right. know, depending on your skin type, it's really tricky. I, I that's why I don't have a face oil in my collection because I'm, I'm not a believer in this. But you know, it's it's like really what you personally love, and if it works for you, that's 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 fine. You know. And it's interesting for me because some face oils do not work at all, and I feel exactly what no. you're saying. Like I just put something yeah. on top of my skin, and it's just not doing it's like a disconnect it doesn't stretch. go into your skin yeah 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 and i it's interesting that you say that because i think when you do have really dry skin that you really do have to be careful about the moisture that you're putting on there and I, again yeah. maybe this is you know jennifer like part i'm not sure if you were even asking this but i am just curious again about the um you know just making sure we're very mindful about ingredients because i'm realizing that more and more these days is that people can put some really harsh things, even in quality skincare products, even in sort of top oh, yeah. shelf stuff. I'm constantly shocked. Yeah, it does, stuff. you know, that is, the, that is another thing, you know, I think just few skincare brands have like real medical and science expertise behind it. So they just put whatever is just on trend in skincare products. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean anything, you know, I think we really need to, to start you know, respecting our skin as an organ, you know, would we ever put acid peels on our heart or kidney or liver? I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't think anybody would do that. You know, it's like, it's just respect our skin as an organ because it interferes with our immune system. It transports ingredients into our skin. It's our protection to us, all these sensors. I just think we need to respect it more. Jennifer, I don't know, did we ever um, reply to your question? You did, no, you did. <laughs> Perfectly. And this whole conversation has been great. Yeah, no, a uh, regimen and just putting good things on, on your skin because it is your largest organ. Um, and it's just about taking care of your skin and drinking a lot of water too, <laughs> which is something yes, exactly. that I don't do enough of. 
exactly but you can also you know you always everybody can schedule a facetime consultations with our estheticians they're happy to take your questions and look at your skin oh, good. closely and okay. can work on a proper routine with you if you want that would be great i will do that yeah oh, let's thank do it. you thank you so this nice great. to meet you thank you you too <laughs> thank you so much not at all thank you so kayla is next hi kayla hi kayla Hi. Hello. Hi, Dr. Stern. Hi, Karen. Nice to meet you. Hi. I'm Hi. from Canada, so very cyclical climates here. Um, I'm based right in the middle of Canada, so we have very harsh winters and then very warm summers. Um, I'm in my 30s. I've been very religious with my skincare routine ever since I was little. I've always seen a dermatologist. I've never really used products from like a drugstore. I've always used dermatologist kind of recommended products. Um, I'm looking to know sort of what would you recommend on your site for a day-to-day -day skincare routine for someone who's in their thirties versus someone who's in their fifties. Um, my mom and I are obviously we're very, um, into making sure that we take really great care, great, great care of our skin. Um, we both have never had Botox and we try to make sure that everything that we're putting obviously onto our skin and our face is of high quality. I actually first saw your product. I was at the collision conference a few weeks ago, and that's where I discovered your products and I started to look into them. So I'm really excited to be here and, and understand a little awesome. bit more about the day-to-day -day routine that I could use and how to use the products properly too, because I think that most don't actually apply them properly. Yeah, that is a um, really great quest questions. Thank you so much. Um, so do you have more dry skin or oily skin or combination skin? Um, mine is more on the oily side and kind of combination. Yeah, so probably especially in summer months, it um, tend to be more oily. So what's what's the same for every skin type is our cleansing process. Obviously, um, you know our normal face wash is like this really hydrating, super gentle cleanser, which I would recommend to use um, morning and night or just at night, depending what your preference is. And then twice a week, I want you to take the enzyme cleanser. And the enzyme cleanser is the most gentle exfoliation um, of dead skin cells. And it only like it has enzymes like subtilisin and lipase, which break down the proteins and the lipids from the cells and gently take off all the dead skin cells. And that's important for um, our cells to take on active ingredients, but also to prevent from breakouts and you know blackheads. So enzyme cleanser. Do you like to tone? Do you use a toner? Yeah, I have one that's been prescribed by my dermatologist. So I'm not sure if... if... Yeah, that is probably quite harsh. So yeah. I would recommend you to use the, our balancing toner, which is actually just hydrating, stabilizing our skin barrier function and um, you know, balancing out the pH. So that is a really good one, especially now when we have to wear facial masks. It's just nice to, to use this balancing toner. I actually started using it um, religiously. And then... Um, I would use a hyaluronic serum based um, serum. So it could be our hyaluronic serum, or you could use our super anti-aging serum, or if you want to do something for uh, pollution, I would also use the um, anti-pollution drops or the, the AG, for the AGV light from the phones. Mm -hmm. But you can just start with the hyaluronic serum. That's a really absolute must have for your morning and night routine. So let's do the... Um, Hyaluronic serum, and then um, I would do the Good C, our vitamin C serum, and the face cream light for the summer. That's what I would use. So the yeah. hyaluronic serum, the Good C, and the face cream light for the summer. And then you can add the eye, 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 eye cream and um, last set the sun drops, our SPF 50. Okay, I perfect. use light cream for the summer, actually, and it's really yes. great, especially when things, you know, when the weather's getting hot and you, you're sweating more and it's just, it's, yeah. a, it's great. It's a really, I can just attest to that cream being fantastic. Perfect. And is there anything uh, within the serums or how you're applying it that you've noticed that some people are doing wrong that we should take note of? So, so the, 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 the one good advice I give to everybody is like start with the light serums and go to the heavy ones. So you start with the hyaluronic serum because that is the water um, solution and all ingredients can penetrate fast and 
um, ease into deeper skin layers. And when you then come with the lipid formulation, like the Good C, that's the next one, which is also great for penetration, but it comes after your hyaluronic serum based ones. So you always start with the lighter ones and then go to the heavier ones, and then you go to your moisturizer. But always also use a moisturizer. Don't replace it with the serums. Right. Always, yeah. I think a lot of people do that sometimes, you know, as they- Yeah, they think, oh, I have these serums and I don't yeah. use a moisturizer. Moisturizer is super important. And, you know, the serums is the serums are for every skin type the same. You know, you use the serums as you decide you want to use them and what kinds and what you want to address, mm. if it's pigmentation or clarifying for breakouts. And then the moisturizer, you really decide if you have big breakouts and combination skin, you do the clarifying face cream. If you do, if you have oily skin and no breakouts, you do the light cream. If you have dry skin, you do the rich cream. So you can really, and then we just launched the super anti-aging face cream, which is amazing for everybody in their 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. So the super anti-aging cream is amazing, uh, like a 360 anti-aging tool. Um, that's probably good for your mom, Kayla. Um, she probably would love that cream. It's amazing. Um, and for, I'll let her for know. Your mom, and for your mom, also the super anti-aging serum and the night serum. Super, super nice. What for dark Huh? I appreciate that. Thank you. So nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you too. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining. And um, yeah, keep us posted on your success with the product. And um, if you want to schedule a FaceTime consultation, please do so. Be in touch with our team. We can help with anything you need. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Karen, thank you so much for being here today. Thank this you. is so fun. It was so You're much fun. It was so lovely to catch up with you. And I hope eventually, you know, when things start to, I guess, open up again, oh, yes. and Fashion Week happens again, I can come and pay yes. you a visit and get yes. my skin I, Yes, we need to get back together for sure. Yeah, thank if you, you happen to come to be in LA or Miami or New York, come for a facial there. But um well, there you know, could be a fun Miami beach trip soon with me under a sun umbrella, but yes, I, I love that. <laughs> Let's plan for that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barbara. It was such a pleasure to, uh, to be here today. Thanks for asking me. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being here. And I see you soon. Big kiss. I hope so. Big kiss Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>